Well, I bet you didn't see that one coming from PPG Paints Arena on the Pittsburgh Hockey Now, a National Hockey Now YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Dan Kingerski. So the Penguins trailed two to nothing midway through the third period. For all intents and purposes, they looked a little bit lost. They obviously looked a little bit out of gas. It was their third game in less than four days. Winnipeg, the fresher team, a myriad of odd man rushes, breakaways, especially against the Penguins' power play. It looked to be one of those days until a nine-second explosion midway through the third, and the Penguins were off and running at that point. Tristan Jari stole, absolutely uh, stole, at least one point for the Penguins. The Penguins do get the 3-2 to two shootout win over Winnipeg Sunday here at PPG Paints Arena. A, couple, a little bit of controversy in the first period as Winnipeg defenseman Brendan Dillon, formerly of the Washington Capitals, kind of lit up Teddy Bluger uh, on the end wall. As Bluger gets in on the four check, Dillon finished his check. Bluger left the game. Uh, a little bit of blood or a lot of blood at center ice. Initially, I thought it was uh, Bluger's arm, but uh, replay showed that uh, Dillon's shoulder connected with Bluger's head. Head coach Mike Sullivan said he thought it was a hit to the head. Uh, I thought it was largely... Uh, incidental. It was just part of finishing his check, and Dylan is six foot four. Kind of bad luck for Bluger, but uh, regardless, unpenalized on the play. The Penguins played on with just 11 forwards in that first period, though. Counting Bluger, the Penguins lost four. Yes, in case my mask is muting my sound, the Penguins lost four forwards in the first period. Brian Boyle answered the bell after he laid a big hit on one of the Jets. Injured in the fight, went off the ice, kind of draping his, his left arm across his knees. Brian Rust hit by a Jake Gensel shot. Brock McGinn was, was also felled by a hit along the boards. And you had to wonder, the Penguins were healthy, fully healthy Thursday morning. And by the first end of the first period on Sunday, they would have lost seven players. However, three of the four came back, Bluger being the exception. Head, uh, uh, Sullivan said that Bluger was being evaluated. Now let's get to the game itself. Winnipeg saw the Penguins attack coming a mile away, especially on the, the power play. Winnipeg attacked the top of the zone, the, the, the Penguins' points on the power play. Uh, as, as one would get the puck, they would chip it off the glass, and the second would come swooping in, and off Winnipeg went. It was a very simple but also very effective attack by Winnipeg. They had no less than half a dozen two-on-one and that's what made Tristan Jari's performance on Sunday so special. He stopped them all, including a couple breakaways too. The, uh, the lone exceptions were Blake Wheeler getting behind the Penguins' defense uh, early in the first period and just a wicked wrister by Kyle Connor, who had a great game on Sunday for Winnipeg. He picked the corner over Jari's shoulder on a power play. Those were Winnipeg's uh, two markers. They really should have had six, seven, or even eight. They dominated the Penguins, especially in that first period. And a lot of high danger chances just seemed to rack those up. But the Penguins, like the Goonies, they just, they, they never say die. And they, they, they found the rhythm in the third period. Sullivan changed the lines. Kapanen went back to Malkin's line. And Danton Heinen went down to Jeff Carter's line. To that point in the game, the um, Dominic Simone, Jeff Carter, Kasperi Kapanen line had zero shots on goal until the third period. Uh, zero attempts. They had a couple misses, I think, maybe even not, e not even a couple misses. But once they flipped the lines in the third period, a little bit of a switch flipped. You saw Kasperi Kapanen and Evgeny Malkin pick up their games. Kapanen gets that goal off of his skate. The place erupted here at PPG. And before they even sat down, Jeff Carter intercepts. Connor Hellebuck's kind of his wraparound reverse attempt pops it right into the net. And I, I must tell you, having covered a lot of games here over the last uh, six or so years, I don't think I've heard this place that loud in a long, long time. Uh, after Jeff Carter scored, the, the roof came off this place. And, and I thought the Penguins then dominated the rest of the third period. They had the, the better chances. The Winnipeg, uh, give them credit, they didn't uh, just buckle underneath the Penguins' pressure. They, they counterattacked pretty well, and Jari had to make a few more brilliant saves. But I, I thought uh, the one thing that opponents might take is to attack the top of the Penguin zone. Sullivan did admit, to, uh, when I asked him about fatigue being a factor for his team, that the first thing to go 
is decision making. We'll write more about that in the Pittsburgh Hockey Now report card, and we'll also get a few more of the uh, chalkboard details as well. From PPG Paints Arena, I'm Dan Kingerski on the National Hockey Now YouTube channel.